Hey, LinkedIn, and welcome back to Business Unusual. This is a live show where we are talking as a community about how the coronavirus is impacting the ways that we all work. I'm your host, Caroline Fairchild, coming to you live from my home office here in New York City. As we all stay at home and shelter in place, the demand for delivery service workers, ride hail drivers is increasing. That means platforms like TaskRabbit are seeing an increase in demand as well and serving a really essential need right now to connect essential workers with customers at this time. But how are these platforms keeping both customers as well as workers safe? On today's show, I'm going to sit down with Stacey brown Philpot. She's the CEO of TaskRabbit, and she's going to talk to us about how she's navigating the company during this time of need. Uh, she'll join us on later in the show. But before we speak with Stacey, I want to hear from you. How are you using these services during this time? What is going on in your community? The whole point of the show is to have a conversation together about this. We want to hear from you. So let us know what questions you have for Stacey. Let us know what you're seeing in your community and hopefully we'll talk together on today's show. And with that, I would like to bring on Stacy. Hi. Hey, Stacy. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I wonder what happened. Maybe, maybe there's something wrong with your, maybe your camera went off here. Maybe one of the producers is going to fix it for us. Let's see. We were just together. <laughs> we were. I just saw you. <laughs> and I'd love to see you again. I don't know if there's something that happened on your end with the camera. Are you using a, a webcam? Yeah. And it was working two minutes ago. <laughs> so that's just weird. Maybe if you refresh the page and come back in. That's one of my producers. Yeah, let's say. try that. Let's see yeah. what happens. Yeah. All right, so while Stacey refreshes her page, obviously the gig economy is something that is seen an insurge in terms of demand right now. There's a lot of people who are not able to do things like go out and get groceries as they are sheltering in place. And so what I really wanted to talk with Stacey about on today's show is how she's navigating that. This is a really critical time for the country. And then on the side of it for the workers, this is a safety concern as well as they're, as they're asked to do these services. I know that TaskRabbit has you know done a lot of stuff to make sure that this, things are contacted List. There she is, Stacey. Good, good to have you. Am I back? <laughs> okay. Before we started, Stacey and I were talking about this is just the reality of a work from home show. <laughs> and we were joking about all the tech stuff. So it's just very fitting that this happened to us. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> refresh <laughs> always works. <laughs> exactly. Always just refresh the page. It's a good lesson <laughs> for all of your life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Stacey, thank you so much for joining us. I'm looking forward to this conversation. I wanted to start with you with the beginning of this pandemic. When did you know that this was going to be a big deal for TaskRabbit's business? You know, in March, which feels like an eternity ago, we were supposed to have a global leadership team offsite. And it was early March and we decided to cancel that offsite. And it was because so much information was coming in around what was and wasn't happening around the pandemic. And it became clear that we weren't gonna have 100% of the knowledge to make a decision. We weren't even gonna have like 10% of what we needed, but we knew that something was wrong and really wrong and that we were about to enter a crisis. So we canceled that offsite. And that was when we knew that this was not just going to affect one city in one country, that this was going to become a global problem that all of us would have to face and address. We didn't know yet how we were going to tackle it, but we knew that it was something that was coming. And how did you initially communicate with workers? I know that you call them taskers on your end about what this really meant for the platform. Were they fearful that you were going to shut down entirely? I'd love to hear what you kind of were hearing from the community that rely on TaskRabbit for income. Yeah, our primary communication has started with, we are here to protect the safety and health of this community. That is our number one priority. And that was our first communication to our taskers. And we have a variety of ways to communicate with them on social media and also through our own internal email communications. But our number one priority was their safety and their health. Yes, many of the taskers wanted to continue to work because this is a source of income for them. There are also a lot of taskers who were afraid and worried about contracting this virus 
especially early on when we didn't really know how it was being spread and what were the preventative things we can do to prevent it from prevent people from getting it. And so we had to sort of go with our top priority, which is protecting the safety and health of everyone. We immediately put up a banner on our website, which said, you know, we are here to protect your safety and your health. We understand that you want to work. And so here is a way to do that. We want you to be able to earn a meaningful income on TaskRabbit. And we made the choice to keep our general marketplace open, but we did so by offering contactless tasks as the way to do that, giving guidance on what a contactless task looks like. And then we started to offer safety kits, which included hand sanitizers, gloves, and masks. So taskers who choose to go out and task could do so in a safe way. And for those of you who are just joining the stream, I'm here with Stacey Brown Philpot. She is the CEO of TaskRabbit. And we're talking about what the gig economy looks like now and what it's going to look like post pandemic. So if you have questions or comments, let us know in this stream. Stacey, you obviously have an employee base that is working remotely right now on the corporate end. What was that transition like? What have you learned now trying to run this company from this remote environment? I know that you have your kids in another room homeschooling. What's that been like for you? <laughs> Yeah, it's been it's been crazy. <laughs> what else can I say? Uh, we we went to work from home. We already had some employees who were working remotely. Now we're a hundred percent working remotely. That's caused us to have to do quite a few things differently. First is just communication. We are communicating more frequently, more often. We created a task force to specifically focus on how we respond to this crisis. That task force meets frequently. We have, we, I send out a weekly communication to the company on where we are and what's happening so that people can hear from us. And then we have a regular company meeting that we do every two weeks. It's all 100% virtual. And so we've done things to sort of make sure people know what's going on. The second thing we've done is really helped people focus on their emotional health and well being. As you as you just said, I, my kids are here. We got a new puppy. Um, there's so much happening. Technology isn't working the way that we want it to. And so I know that that's the case for a lot of people in our company and obviously across the world. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just cutting some slack. Give us a break. In the end, we're not saying this is what has to be done today. We're saying take care of yourself. We've launched some programs for people to be able to do that. We also have like virtual like cooking sessions and guitar lessons so people can stay connected. You know, our team is doing fun little TikTok videos and sharing them around um, so that we can sort of make sure people are staying, you know, positive and showing connection since in an environment where we can't all be together. So asking for a lot of forgiveness on kids running into rooms, babies crying, puppies squeaking toys, um, and then you know inviting those children to meetings. I've done that. My kids have come to meetings with me just because they're there, <laughs> and you know that's just made life a whole lot easier. We found that people have been you know inspired and motivated by our focus on empathy and care, and it has helped us adapt to this new world create an environment we can really focus on our taskers and giving them a way to earn a meaningful income. And also clients who are choosing you to use TaskRabbit right now have a way to get the essential things done that they want to get done. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about those clients who are using TaskRabbit right now. There, there's probably a lot of fear. People are fearful of you know, how to use these services during this time. What measures have you taken to ensure that both customers as well as workers who are, as you said, really relying on TaskRabbit for income during this time are safe? Yeah, well, we've, we've done a lot of things to really promote and talk about the importance of contactless tasks. As a result of that, as you can imagine, deliveries, errands, shopping for groceries, picking up prescriptions and medications, making deliveries to people who are working on the front lines, healthcare workers, we've seen a rise in all of those categories of tasks. And that's because that's where the demand is, that's where the need is, and those are essential services. We're telling people how to do those, we're providing information, like I said, we're providing safety kits to people. We're also seeing people buy barbecue grills, trampolines, exercise equipment, and hiring somebody from TaskRabbit, 
TaskRabbit to come and put those things together because they're sheltering in place and at home. And th those are essential needs. You're trying to take care of your family. You're trying to cook. You're trying to stay healthy. You're trying to be mindful of your well-being. So those are the sort of things we're, we're seeing happen and what clients need. And we're giving them the opportunity to do so in a safe way. We also have a team that's monitoring. So if someone is around someone that they suspect may have COVID-19, we're asking for them to report that to us. We're doing all the follow-on reporting as required to the regulatory agencies, and we're doing monitoring of that as well. And that that I, that knowledge that we're doing that has actually helped our taskers know that they can come to us, they can cancel the task if they're worried about something and not be penalized for it, and that we're there to protect them too. And so that safety has created a great amount of trust amongst our community. Right. And you recently launched a program, a volunteer program on TaskRabbit. What prompted the decision to launch that product and what has the demand been so far? Yeah, so we've, we've launched Tasks for Good. And you know, a lot of people, I feel very lucky to have a home and a place where I can safely shelter in place and hopefully get through this interview in 25 minutes without my kids running in. But a lot of people aren't in that situation. And we know that. We also know that a lot of people are immunocompromised. They don't have the ability to leave the home. They may be older and worried and afraid and scared. And so we wanted to just use our platform to, to help. So we launched a volunteer program where taskers can volunteer to provide services for essential needs for at-risk or vulnerable populations who include elderly, immunocompromised people, people who are on the front lines and are healthcare workers, and they can provide those services at no cost. So you sign up, you just volunteer your time for free to go run errands, do grocery shopping, pick up prescriptions. Uh, we also partner with the United Way. So if you dial the 211 number on United Way, a tasker would come and help you and provide those services to you at no cost mm -hmm. as well. It really is just a way to, to provide some equity around what's happening, knowing that this pandemic is not affecting everybody equally. And there's a lot of people who are more deeply affected than others. And I've seen a lot of grassroots efforts in my own community over, over next door, people putting in Google Docs and saying that they'll help. But it's so great to see kind of these tech forward uh, improvements to that. So it's great to see that. And if you're just joining the stream, this is Business Unusual. We're talking with Stacey brown Philpot about the future of the gig economy and how she's running TaskRabbit during this time of a pandemic. I want to thank Jose Boris, Eduardo Admin for joining us. Raj says, I've never heard of TaskRabbit before. Now I may use it. So now you have a, a new customer. Because Excellent. <laughs> So that's great. Uh, let us know what's going on in your community. We'd love to have a conversation about that on today's show. Stacey, last time that I interviewed you, we talked about your experience with the last dot-com bubble burst and your 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 leadership during that time and how it was like working through that. I was speaking with a lot of leaders who are saying that their experiences in past recessions, while this one is different, has kind of helped them navigate this one. How did that experience shape how you're running TaskRabbit now and any learnings for executives who are on the stream? Yeah, so TaskRabbit was founded in 2008, which was during the great recession of, of my lifetime. And so this company has the DNA and the ability to sustain a downturn. But there is a lot that's different about what's happening. The speed which with this has occurred is just faster than anything that we've ever seen. I mean, 10 years of job growth has been lost in six weeks. This is just awful. The, the external nature of this virus, it's, we can't point to one thing and say, okay, go fix that one thing and everything will be okay. No, it, this is something that's impacting our health it's impacting our well-being. It's impacting our personal life. So that's very, very different than what happened in 2008. Having said that, we I have learned that businesses that focus on what matters most will can and will endure. At TaskRabbit, we our mission is to make everyday life easier for everyday people. We've done that, and our focus is on doing that and doing it in a way where we protect the safety and health of the community. If we keep that as a number one priority and we adapt to what's happening, then that then creates an opportunity 
never waste a crisis. We're in Silicon Valley, so I can say never waste a crisis. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity to think about now that we stabilized our business and we've adapted to what will become a new normal, there's opportunities for growth and innovation sitting in front of us. And it's a great opportunity to think about what those things are. And mm -hmm. so we do have a team that's focused on doing that. The Task for Good program came out of how do we find new opportunities right now? And now we're thinking about what are the next opportunities that are going to be important for us as we enter into this new normal. So use this opportunity, this crisis, to create opportunities for the future. Those are the kind of companies that I believe will endure. And I see a lot of people on the stream echoing what you're saying. Chris says, I love the TaskRabbit user experience, never used it as a tasker, though. Serena says, love the TaskRabbit launched a volunteer program. So there are people on the stream who are commending your leadership during this time. Stacey, you're talking about the, the opportunities in the new normal. I'm sure that you are already thinking about what the gig economy is going to look like moving forward. What are How is this going to change and what do you think the opportunities are? Well, the the gig economy has fundamentally changed already. I mean, think about it. The taskers who are tasking on TaskRabbit are the real heroes who are going out and helping immunocompromised people who are helping elderly people, providing support and services. They are the brave ones who are doing that. It has never been more clear that independent contractors in the gig economy are essential to the sustainability of our society. Independent contractors have also grown. This is a way of working that people are seeking. You and, all, you and I both know what the unemployment numbers look like, and many people have turned to these options for earning a meaningful income. And so it's not going anywhere. I would love to see more options around portable benefits, ways that people can feel like I can work this way, have flexibility, earn a meaningful income, and then generate benefits for me if something goes wrong in my life. And those are the conversations that I hope this new normal will also start to create. I hope we start to embrace the importance of this way of working, see how essential it is, and create the right infrastructure that allows people to work in the way that they want to work, earn how they want to earn, setting their own rates, and also accrue benefits to them over time. And that topic of portable benefits is something that we've discussed in the past pre-pandemic. I'm curious, what are your conversations with leaders now? Do you see that momentum and the uh, the policies that we would potentially put in place to encourage portable benefits, are they increasing right now? Or what have your conversations been like with other leaders? There's a there's a openness now I've seen to having this discussion. Uh, a lot of companies and my peers have wanted this for a long time. A lot of our taskers, they just want the option to earn income the way that they want. They just want the flexibility and the comfort and so I believe that there's a, there's a larger openness to having this conversation in a way that's productive and collaborative. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take a question from the stream now. Stephen wants to know, what have you heard from your workers as demand grows? What's been the biggest learning curve for them? You know, a lot of our taskers are, because they're on the front lines, they are, they're trying to figure out how to communicate with us and also just respond to what's happening in the community at the same time. A lot of different counties and states are publishing policies and they don't know which one to follow because sometimes they're conflicting. So one of the biggest learnings is, you know, how do we synthesize information and give them the right thing to do? The other thing is that they're showing us is just the power of humanity. There's, you know, a woman whose 98 year old grandmother is in New York. She couldn't go outside to get her groceries. And so she hired a tasker to go and pick them up, plus her prescriptions and deliver it. And so that tasker shared that story with us. And it was a volunteer task. And it just really is highlighting sort of the power of people assuming the best, doing good and humanity and and they are on the front line seeing it feeling it and experiencing it and we are loving all of the stories that come through around it the power of humanity is just so it's so powerful right now i went for a walk a couple of days ago and i saw a policeman helping uh, someone in the park who had 
I think they'd fallen or something happened with their leg and, you know, masks and everything. And the woman was hysterical. And I, I started tearing up because it's, it's, it's so impactful to see that there is a community out there. I'm seeing a lot of people on the stream echoing that. Lisa says, thanks for being a job creator. This is so important right now. Pearl says, agree, seizing the new way to think business services as well as new approach to change is paramount. There's definitely people who are, Serena says, love the Task Rabbit volunteer program as well. You know, Stacey, you were recently tapped to sit on Governor Newsom's COVID recovery task force. What are you tasked with, pun, pun very much intended, with that <laughs> and what have those initial meetings looked like? Yeah, so it's an honor to be on this task force. It's a cross section of people from government, business, healthcare, the public sector, nonprofits, and it's a it's a great group of people who really just care about the state of California's recovery. Our goal is to help support the state in bringing the state of California back to a place of recovery in an equitable way. Mm -hmm. And I say equitable because as we know, a lot of what's happening is not impacting everybody in the same way. And so a big focus of this task force is really talking about and thinking about the communities that are hardest hit and helping to solve and address the key issues and concerns that those groups of people have. And so we've had a couple of calls and meetings, Zoom meetings, uh, since the task force has been created. And we are seriously now moving into subcommittees focused on a variety of topics, including workforce training, the climate and how we use this moment to improve our focus on the environment, what our short-term needs are, what our long-term needs are, and how do we help people return to work in a safe way. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it's an honor to be a part of something like this and to contribute our input. My goal is to help make sure that how the gig economy evolves coming out of this pandemic is, is productive and that we work with the state of California to ensure that the independent contractors who choose to task and provide services in the gig economy have a, a, a safe way to do so, a healthy way to do so, and, and are supported. Equitable reopening is becoming a bigger conversation that I'm seeing across platforms right now. And so I know that the gig economy is going to be a big part of that. So I'm interested to see what the task force comes up with there in California. So a question from the stream from Lindsay, who wants to know, how is TaskRabbit helping those taskers who are unable to work due to shelter in place? Yeah, so we are, you know, communicating with our taskers. We're giving them options for things like a lot of our taskers used to do things that require going inside of a home, which isn't an option for many people right now. And so we've given them the option to do virtual tasks. Here's how you might do that. And so we you know, really help them think about other skills that they might have and ways that they might use TaskRabbit in a safe way to continue to do things that they might have otherwise done, like going inside of a home, which would be unsafe for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know that before the crisis, you, your, your taskers would come together and teach each other things and, and try and expand the services that they can offer each other. Are you seeing the community come together as well during this time? A hundred percent. They are, uh, you know, they have their own private Facebook group, which we don't get to see. But sometimes we'll get some stories out of them. And they're really, a lot of them are cheering each other on. You know, I have, we've heard lots of stories of, you know, here's here's a good way to approach doing something contactless. And that was very early on. I think there's a good rhythm around that now. And every week we're six or seven weeks into this. Uh, a lot of them are encouraging them to try new tasks. Um, a lot of them are encouraging them to sign up for the volunteer program as a way to provide help um, to people. And, you know, signing up for a delivery task and doing some of those tasks allows you to get outside the house and earn some income at the same time. So a lot of it has been a lot of cheering on and motivating and then providing emotional support for those who feel like, I don't wanna do anything right now. They're providing emotional support to each other. It really is just the power of community.
So you have seen a lot of questions in the stream right now along the veins of what the new normal is going to look like and when it comes to tech. Are there new opportunities? Syed, Vicky, and Peter are asking about what the next technological opportunity may be coming out of this crisis. So putting your tech exec, exec hat <laughs> on for us in your crystal ball, what do you think you're going to see a new new Uber, a new Airbnb? What are the opportunities you think in the market? Yeah, it's, you know, who knows? Like, this is a great time to start a company. So if you have ideas, you should write them down. Um, you know, the way we are communicating right now has is has forever changed. We will, I don't think we'll ever go back to how we communicated before. I doubt that we will see as much travel as we've ever done for every conference or meeting and working remotely has really changed the way decisions get made. And so I think there are a tremendous amount of opportunities there. Obviously solving how we identify a pandemic, trace how it's happening and protect the safety of the people in a community we're learning a ton about that. And so I think that's a ripe area for people to think about what kind of companies can be created, what technologies will allow us to maintain our privacy, but allow for the public health and safety of a community. That's a huge opportunity that anyone who's excited to work on, go for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, all, I'm seeing some people in the stream talking about how they're benefiting from TaskRabbit right now. Amy says, I think a lot of parents could use help from a remote tasker as the schools change graduations and other milestones. I just hired someone to help me build memory books. So we're definitely seeing people in the stream using that. And Stacey, before I let you go, there are a couple of members who don't know TaskRabbit and they feel like they could benefit from, you know, a quick overview of they've lost their jobs or their income. You know, what is your, what, what can you say to them in terms of how TaskRabbit could fill in some income for them during this time of need? Yeah, so TaskRabbit is a two-sided marketplace where you can get your essential things done around the home. Um, right now, many of those things are done in a contactless way and can range from some of the things we discussed around deliveries and shopping and errands to assembly of trampolines and toys to somebody just set memory books. But I could imagine a tasker coming by and decorating the front of a house or a backyard for a birthday party or a graduation, but anything that's done in a contactless way. And so it's an opportunity for a person who's interested in earning a meaningful income to sign up, become a tasker, provide some information to us. We'll do a, a background check. Once that's done, you can set your own rates. You can set your own schedule. You can decide when, where, how you want to work, what skills, and tasks you want to do. And once you're up and running in the marketplace, it's a great way to earn income. And as some of the listeners just mentioned, graduation season is upon us. And many people will be thinking about the ways that they can honor the graduates. And so if you're at all creative, there's an opportunity for there, there for you too. Well, Stacey, thank you so much for this conversation. It's always great hearing from you. Thanks for coming on Business Unusual. I look forward to talking to you again once this crisis hopefully is past us, but I think we should do it in person and we should both bring our new puppies if, if you're down for that. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you to our taskers who really are the superheroes right now. I am eternally grateful to anyone who was choosing to trust TaskRabbit and Task to help those who are essential and in need. All right. Thanks, Stacey. That was Stacey brown Philpott. She is the CEO of TaskRabbit, talking to us about how she's navigating running TaskRabbit during this global pandemic and her thoughts and insights on what the gig economy will look like as we move past this. Thank her so much for coming on to the show. This is Business Unusual, a live show. We were talking with you about how the coronavirus is impacting the ways that we all work. We're here with you every weekday at 12 noon. My colleague Susie Jackson will be back here tomorrow, Friday, for a conversation at noon at Eastern, I should say. So be sure to join us then. I'm Caroline Fair. Child, thank you so much for joining us.